So overall, there's been a great decline in waterborne diseases and particularly among children because children are at increased risk for diarrheal diseases, particularly children under five years of age. And so public health gains have been dramatic over the years, but we see a potential reversal of these trends now coming up with climate change because climate change will lead to these extreme precipitation events, these extreme rain events, and then the increase of temperature and the combination of the two can increase the risk for waterborne diseases. Oceans are getting much warmer also. It turns out if the oceans get warmer, then more water evaporates. And the fact that that water evaporates means that there's more water in the atmosphere. And because you have more water in the atmosphere, it has to go somewhere. And so that's how it comes down with these extreme precipitation events, these extreme rain events. And we see that particularly in the northern part of the world, like in Scandinavia, in Europe, these extreme rain events damage our infrastructure. Our infrastructure isn't built for those kind of extreme rain events and, and weather events. And we see that now also here in the US with these extreme hurricanes that are affecting Florida, these extreme events that destroy the infrastructure. So that's what we're concerned about. So one thing leads to another, and that can lead to waterborne outbreaks in the end. So we can definitely water, climate-proof our infrastructure by building an infrastructure that can sustain those kind of, kind of impacts. We can build early warning systems. For example, we can monitor meteorologic conditions ahead of time, and we can then see where those potential impacts will be. For us in the global North, what we have seen in the United States, in Canada, and in Europe, there have been some elegant epidemiologic studies that have linked extreme weather events and extreme rain events with waterborne outbreaks. So there's definitely a link with, with these climatic conditions and these waterborne outbreaks, but there could be all kinds of pathogens that cause these, these outbreaks. That it could be fecal coliform, it could be salmonella, it could be all kinds of different types of pathogens, but we do see a spike in waterborne outbreaks and what the individual agent is, totally depends on the circumstances and, and the scenario they're looking at. But there are other things we can do also. For example, in England, we looked at um, outbreaks that happened in the spring when, when it rains a lot. So you, ha you have a, it's an extreme rain event in the spring and then you see a spike in, in waterborne diseases. And by implementing proper UV treatment and sand filtration of the water, you can totally eliminate these spikes in, in waterborne outbreaks. And that has been documented epidemiologically that if you retrofit the infrastructure with UV irradiation, for example, as opposed to only chlorine, because certain parasites like cryptosporidium survives chlorination. So if you use UV, you can potentially eliminate those pathogens from the drinking water supply that are linked to these extreme rain events. And that's how you particularly can protect the health of the public by changing the way that you treat the water. So there are ways that can be done, but we need to take these risks into consideration and try to upgrade our water treatment plants according to the risks that are coming down, with, with, coming down the pipelines now with climate change.